The concept of Texas independence, or Texit, continues to grow and gain significant attention and support. However, along with this growing interest, we get numerous misconceptions and myths surrounding the movement. In this video, we'll debunk some of these most common myths and give you a better understanding of the goals and objectives of Texit, so you'll have a better understanding of what the Texas Nationalist Movement is working to achieve. One of the most common misconceptions about Texit is that it's an effort to rebel against the United States. In reality, the Texas Nationalist Movement is advocating for a peaceful and legal separation process within the existing political system, through which Texans can exercise their right to self-determination. The TNM believes that Texas and Texans should have the opportunity to vote in its independence just as other nations and territories worldwide have done in the past. This is not a rebellion, but a legitimate and legal process that allows Texans to decide their own future. If you pay attention, you'll notice the only ones saying civil war are those against an independent Texas. Are they really suggesting that bombing or troops are a rational response to Texans voting? Nobody but a fool wants war. If you dig a little further, you'll see that the TNM's terms of participation are explicitly nonviolent. If you want to rebel against the government with force of arms, you're not welcome in the Texit movement. Another myth is that Texit supporters are anti-American or unpatriotic. In fact, many Texit supporters are proud Americans who deeply respect the values and principles on which the United States was founded. For many of us, our support for Texas stems from a belief that Texas, as an independent nation, would be better able to preserve and promote those values. We view independence as a way to secure a more prosperous and just future for the people of Texas. But what about those Americans who fought for our freedom or for freedom worldwide? Does Texas dishonor their sacrifice? For those in the Texit movement who are veterans of those wars, or previously served in the armed forces, it clearly doesn't. A war to preserve the principles of freedom, liberty, or even democracy is very different from preserving the political union, the United States of America. The United States of America as a political union has long left the principles of limited government and individual freedoms that were present at its founding. Rather than un-American, it's likely that free Texas will be more American than the current United States of America when it comes to the preservation of rights, limitations of government power, and preservation of a Republican form of representative government. Some would argue that an independent Texas would face economic ruin as it would no longer benefit from the resources and support of the United States. As we've seen in past videos, Texas has one of the strongest economies in the country and would rank among the top economies in the world if it were an independent nation. With a diverse economic base that includes energy, technology, agriculture, and manufacturing, Texas has the resources and infrastructure we need to thrive as an independent nation. Would Texas continue to have economic ties with the U.S.? Seems likely, as there are already ties between the U.S. and the other current North American country, Mexico and Canada. Would the U.S. want to use Texas oil, gas, agricultural, or technology resources? Would Texas benefit from trading with the U.S.? Texas and the U.S. would be better off as trading partners than as adversaries. Did you know Texas already has mutual economic cooperation deals with other countries like Finland? There's no reason an independent Texas couldn't enter international trade deals that would serve its interests. Texas already has international airports and seaports. We have international highway systems that would connect to both the U.S. and Mexico. We have good things to trade that the U.S. needs, and they have good things to trade that would benefit us. 
mutual benefit seems to be a strong motivator. Is it possible there will be a period of uncertainty? Of course. Might things get interesting in the short term? Possibly. But it's arguing against the data to say that Texas doesn't have what it takes to survive on the world economic stage. A common argument against Texas is that it's legally impossible as the United States Constitution doesn't explicitly provide for a state's secession. This is a myth we've deconstructed multiple times recently. The TNM argues that the right to self-determination is a fundamental principle enshrined in the U.S. Declaration of Independence and international law. Furthermore, there's recent global precedent for a nation subdivision to peacefully negotiate its independence, as we've seen in the recent example of Scotland, which held a referendum on independence from the United Kingdom in 2014. That referendum didn't pass, yet the world also didn't erupt into chaos for allowing the people to vote. Let's break down the legal issues. For something to be illegal, there has to be a law against it. Since neither the U.S. Constitution nor the U.S. federal law forbid a state from withdrawing its membership in the Union, it's 100% legal. Withdrawal is not mentioned in the limitations of the powers of states. That right falls under the Tenth Amendment powers that are delegated to the states or the people in the U.S. Constitution. The Texas Constitution says that the faith of the people of Texas stands pledged to the preservation of a Republican form of government, and subject to this limitation only, they have at all times the inalienable right to alter, reform, or abolish their government in such manner as they may think expedient. Did you notice the word abolish in there? Texas would effectively abolish the current relationship between the U.S. and Texas governments. When do we have the right to change our government? At all times, whenever and however we may think expedient. Another common legal issue mentioned is the 1869 Supreme Court case of Texas v. White. In this case, which was actually about bonds sold during the Civil War by the Texas government and who was their present rightful owner. Justice Chase mentioned as an aside, not really as part of the judgment of the case itself, that the states had no right to secede. Think about that for a minute. Here we are just four years past the Civil War and a court with five justices appointed by Lincoln, by Lincoln is tasked with deciding a secession issue. Imagine the chaos that would happen if the court upheld the right of the South to secede. The politics of the time left the court no choice. History also shows that the Supreme Court isn't so supreme. We need only look back a short time to the reversal of Roe v. Wade to see a very public and impactful example of a time when the court changed its mind. Given that the issue of secession has never been heard on its own merits by the court, and that the only court mention of it is an aside at a time when secession must necessarily have been condemned, and that the said mention was 153 years ago, it seems likely that the modern Supreme Court may have a different opinion today. When it comes down to it, did George Washington ask King George for a legal opinion? when Texas votes itself out of the Union, will it ask the U.S. Supreme Court for its blessing? Let's look at the strategy that the TNM has proposed for a peaceful separation. The process begins with a law passed by the Texas legislature. Unless elected officials doing the people's business to pass laws is illegal, we're good so far. Next, that law would provide for a popular vote on the question should Texas reassert its status as an independent nation? Is voting illegal? It sure doesn't seem to be. Should the vote pass, the legislation calls for a select committee of Texas government officials to form a plan to transition into an independent state within a specified time. Is government contingency planning or execution of those plans illegal? Hard to argue that it would be. Some fear that the process of Texas independence would lead to chaos and violence. 
However, the TNM is committed to a peaceful and democratic process, advocating for a statewide referendum to allow Texans to decide their own future. By allowing a lawful and transparent process, Texas seeks to minimize the risk of unrest and make sure there's a smooth transition should Texas become an independent nation. The Texas legislature calling for a vote, the people voting, or government-level negotiations are not acts of war or violence. If there is violence, it'll be at the hands of those who want to make us stay, not those who want to leave. Think about violence in another relationship, a marriage. If there's a history of violence, such that one spouse beat another, does that history preclude separation? Is the threat of further violence enough to maintain a union? If you try and leave, I'll kill you, says the abusive spouse. The threat may be sufficient, but what kind of union is really preserved? If a union must be preserved by violence, it's not a mutually beneficial union. To say that Texas must not leave or violence will result is to advocate for the abusive spouse and against the abused victim. The Texas Nationalist Movement's primary goal is to secure the right for Texans to vote for their independence. We believe that Texans should have the opportunity to make an informed decision about their future based on accurate information and a clear understanding of the potential benefits and challenges of independence. The TNM is also committed to preserving the values and principles that have made Texas great. They believe that an independent Texas would be better positioned to promote limited government, individual liberty, and free market principles, ensuring its people a more prosperous and just future. As we've seen, many myths surrounding Texit are based on misunderstandings or misconceptions about the movement's goals and objectives. By debunking these myths, we hope to provide a clearer understanding of what Texit truly represents. It's an opportunity for Texans to exercise their right of self-determination in a peaceful, and democratic manner. Texas is not about rebellion, anti-American sentiment, or inevitable economic collapse. It's about giving Texans a chance to decide their own future and potentially build a more prosperous and just society. The Texas Nationalist Movement remains committed to pursuing this goal through legal and peaceful means, advocating for a statewide referendum on independence. Now that you better understand Texit and its goals, we encourage you to continue learning about the movement and engaging in the conversation. We invite you to share this video with others to help dis dispel misconceptions and promote a more informed discussion on the potential benefits and challenges of Texas independence. To stay informed and support the Texas Nationalist Movement, consider joining our movement, signing up for our newsletter, and following us on social media. Together, we can work towards a brighter future for Texas, rooted in the principles of limited government, individual liberty, and self-determination. Thanks for joining us this month as we all work to accomplish these worthy goals. I look forward to seeing y'all again next month.